Hi, I'm Sam Brotman here with Brotman Law in San Diego, and this blog post is the good and bad news for Amazon sellers. So as many of you got the email and are aware, uh, California has issued a formal legal demand to Amazon, and tomorrow Amazon will be turning over its seller information to the state of California um, so that California can go back and potentially go after people who have not been collecting and remitting sales tax in California. So since this email came out last week, uh, we've spoken with a number of Amazon sellers um, and I've done a number of consults with people, kind of giving them you know, the advice that we would give them in a consult uh, based on their particular situation. And a lot of the things that have come out of those consults are some misconceptions and some misinformation surrounding this process. So I wanted to take the opportunity to get on uh, with you today and to address a lot of these things because I think they're important and I think that there's a lot of misinformation floating around there uh, that is affecting people's judgment. So to the extent that we can remedy some of this misinformation, uh, people will hopefully take some actions that are positive and constructive towards this problem. So let's start with the good news because whenever you're gonna give bad news to somebody, it's always helpful to give them a bit of good news first. So piece of good news, uh, this problem is totally fixable. It's something that you can, uh, if addressed proactively, and if you do it relatively soon, because of the timing of all this, uh, you can protect your Amazon sales business. And in a lot of these cases that we see, and our firm has probably done 50 or 60 of these Amazon cases over the last several years, uh, all of these businesses, for the most part, have survived this. So even though this seems like an astronomical problem and there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of panic surrounding this issue, I want to assure you that with some proper planning and with some proper guidance and with some decisive action, you too can address this problem because I know it seems to be you know, very, very large and there's a lot of information around this. And I apologize in advance if this video is a little bit information heavy, but I just want to make sure that everybody has access to the same facts. So. First, I want to start with the beginning of this whole conflict. And what I will say is if you stick around with me to the end of this video, I will give you some good practical advice on how to deal with the situation and let you know what the first steps are. So stick with me as I explain this. So California and Amazon got into a very, very public fight uh, in kind of around the 2009-2010 era. And what it ended up in is it ended up in a lawsuit. Uh, and California actually lost that lawsuit. And so California being uh, <laughs> the sore losers that they are sometimes, uh, the California legislator uh, uh, put something out called the, what's lovingly referred to as the Amazon sales tax law. And essentially what this did is increase the definition of doing business in California to include certain activities. And one of those activities was holding inventory in California uh, whether directly or through a third-party agent. So as of the end of 2013, Amazon sellers were considered having nexus in California by lieu of the fact that they were holding inventory through Amazon's FBA platform. And that nexus extends whether or not the seller was aware of it or not. Because I know what the, the common complaint is in the seller community is that we shipped all this product to Amazon and Amazon just kind of moves it around their warehouses as they see fit and we had no idea that this was going to happen. California unfortunately doesn't make that distinction and so it's pursuing sellers in light of that fact. So the bad news with respect to this is that for most sellers who have been operating since late 2013 or whenever you've been operating you have presumably had nexus in California. And California has been very aggressive on this plateau. California has been kind of leading the charge uh, with a number of states because California uh, needs revenue. And so California realized that one of its biggest revenue deficiencies was people who are operating outside the state of California. So California has set up an out-of-state compliance division and is really aggressively pursuing out-of-state people, not just Amazon sellers, but out-of-state people in general who have some sort of nexus or contact 
with California. Um, and this has been a real hallmark of my practice over the last three or four years is we've seen more and more uh, cases of people intentionally stepping into California, either from a sales tax perspective or a state income tax perspective, and California going after them. And so we've had to defend a number of out-of-state companies in this area. So the bad news is, is that the company's ignorance of the law is not viewed as a valid reason for noncompliance. So once you are established having nexus inside the state of California, there are consequences from a sales tax perspective, and there are also consequences from a state income tax perspective. See, but because by lieu of California opening up the definition of doing business in the state, it's equivalent to you having a branch office in California. So this is a big problem, obviously, because a lot of people have been selling through Amazon and not aware that they have been creating nexus with California. You know, on top of all that, Amazon doesn't really help people out very much. Uh, unfortunately, you know, if you have an Amazon seller's account, you may get a deposit, you know, every two weeks with all the sales that you've done, and that deposit is just a lump sum with all the Amazon fees being taken out. So a lot of people assumed improperly that Amazon was taking taxes and remitting taxes out of this, and that's simply not the case. Amazon doesn't have an obligation, at least in California, to do that, and it wasn't doing that. So Amazon essentially created this mess where they created a nexus in California in a variety of different places and have obligated their sellers to that but have not been remitting the tax. So California is unfortunately not offering any sort of reprieve. Um, they are offering a little bit of a break through the traditional platforms that they've had in California. One is called the Voluntary Compliance Program, uh, and one is called the Managed Audit Program. Uh, the Voluntary Compliance Program generally has a three-year look-back window that would forgive all the penalties, uh, and Managed Audit will also forgive the penalties, and it's a two-year window. So I would go into a little bit more explanation on what those two programs are about, but I don't want to confuse people. And whether or not you qualify for one program or the other, kind of depends on the facts of your case. But just be aware that there are ways to limit your liability past a certain point of time in California. The other problem is, is that this problem is not really limited to California. Uh, there have been a number of states that have put tremendous pressure on Amazon. Uh, most recently, New Jersey and Amazon entered into agreement where Amazon's going to be uh, collecting all the tax on behalf of, of uh, New Jersey sellers and so and New Jersey sales and so this is a really important thing because a lot of people are operating on the assumption that well this problem will get fixed or corrected and they don't really have to do anything if they just wait it out unfortunately the problem is is that we have a Supreme Court case called Wayfair versus South Dakota um, which many of you are familiar with and Wayfair has kind of blessed the concept of economic nexus it's not a threshold blessing. It just blesses the concept in general. So you don't have to engage in a certain amount of economic threshold, like the South Dakota law. A lot of people are operating under that assumption. Any minimum contacts with the state, because the states are able to operate and regulate businesses that operate in their state, any operation within that state is controlled by the state. And unless there is a conflict um, or a federal law that would oversee that, um, the state's kind of free to do what it wants. And the Supreme Court put a blessing on that. So the Supreme Court's ruling in Wayfair, which blesses the concept of economic nexus, is now the law of the land. And absent a judicial or a legislative intervention in this area, uh, then the states are kind of free to do what they want. So Wafer didn't speak to the idea of retroactivity, that the states couldn't go back and do this. Uh, Wayfair didn't put any limits on this. So the problem is, is that while some states have taken legislative measures, uh, Washington State uh, adopted the Marketplace Sellers Act, a number of others, there's about five or six that have put pressure on Amazon to collect their taxes. A lot of states haven't done this. You know, in California, for example, I'm not aware of any current proposals that would put marketplace fairness or something like that 
uh, in line. Uh, I'm also not aware of anything that would prohibit California from going back retroactively. So from a legislative standpoint, there's just not a lot there. And Congress, uh, our federal Congress, doesn't seem particularly apt to act in this area, uh, in spite of some discussion after the Wafer case. Problem number two is that usually when there's a judicial decision from a Supreme Court standpoint, there will be a number of companion cases that will kind of come through and you know, help kind of craft the court's position. So the Supreme Court will swing the pendulum one way, and then there will be some companion cases that kind of dial it back a little bit. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of companion cases that really address this issue that are that far along, at least that will impact sellers on an immediate basis. So for at least for the foreseeable future of the next you know, couple of years, this day still remains a very serious issue. And there's nothing that is out there to kind of protect the sellers from California or, you know, any of the other states going after them. And I want to be really clear here, even though the email that everybody got is with respect to California, the problem is, is this isn't just limited to California. Amazon's distribution of inventory through the FBA platform has created nexus for people in a variety of states. And which states Amazon has created nexus for you depends on what you're selling, it depends on your uh, sales volume as a seller uh, and where your customers are located. And so unfortunately, you know, the problem is, is that a lot of people are now have nexus in other states um, unwillingly. And California, even though they're at the forefront of being aggressive, it doesn't mean that the other states are, follow, are not going to follow suit. Some states, for example, Washington has been particularly aggressive in this area and going back against out-of-state sellers and hasn't offered uh, any sort of amnesty. So it's really important to know that this problem, even though we all became aware of it through California's action, actually is, is a problem across states. And a lot of Amazon sellers think, well, you know, I'm a New York company or I'm a Kentucky company or a Florida company. Uh, I don't really have any exposure here. But the problem is, is you're thinking about yourself as well, California can't touch me because I'm in state, I'm, I'm in one state, or, you know, I'm a New York company. The problem is that I want to encourage people to think like this. You're actually not a New York company or a Florida company or wherever you're located. You're a multi-state entity because, like I said earlier, Amazon's policy of putting inventory in various warehouses has essentially availed you to potentially nexus in every state that Amazon has a warehouse in, uh, which is really scary. So you need to start thinking about yourself as a multi-state corporation. Um, furthermore, even if you're located in another state, yes, it, from a resource standpoint, it is unlikely that California will come into your state and pursue a judgment against you, unless your potential liability you know, were in the millions. But they can, and much easier than going into your home state and pursuing a judgment is a variety of different financial institutions and Amazon itself have nexus with the state of California. So California, by virtue of getting seller information, by collecting, by making an assessment, whatever that assessment is, if you don't respond to the notices that you receive, they'll just make an assessment anyway. And then once that assessment is on the books, they can take collection action. They can go after uh, your bank if your bank has Nexus in California. They can go after Amazon and levy your Amazon account receivables. So just because you're located in a different state doesn't mean that they can't pursue this against you. And that's really important to think about. The problem is even worse for international sellers because international sellers may have some sort of treaty exemption with the United States on a federal level. So for example, if you're an Amazon seller in either Canada or Mexico, you have an exemption under NAFTA, where as long as you have U.S. source income but don't maintain a physical presence in the United States, you don't have to file a federal tax return. The problem is, is Amazon and the states viewing you as having physical presence by virtue of you having inventory may compromise your treaty exemptions. And this is just from Mexico and California. 
but there's another other countries as well and Amazon sellers located in other countries whether it's Asia or Europe or wherever there where there are potential significant tax consequences with this because you may potentially have US source income the nice thing from an from an international sellers perspective is your personal assets are really aren't at risk because you don't have a lot of concern that California is going to cross the border and you know take your home in Mexico or Canada or wherever. But the issue is, is you still have some level of contact with the United States. At least on a minimal level, you sell through Amazon and California can always le levy Amazon. So this could either be potentially a nuisance or it could be a major disruption depending on um, what's going on with your business. So, and again, all these things are sort of fact specific. You know, I'm telling you this just to put the information out there. Um, from a good news standpoint, because I want to end on some good news. Uh, from a good news standpoint, there are ways that you can protect yourself. Uh, the very first thing that I help clients do on a very broad sense is understanding the fact that California has already caught you, because they have. It's only a matter of time before they run your EIN and those of the other Amazon sellers in 17 against the EINs for people who filed in California and start sending out audit notices or these compliance notices. So you already have been caught. Let's just make that really clear. So given the fact that you can't change anything that's happened in the past, the idea that we approach as a law firm is in trying to minimize your exposure for the conduct that's happened in the past. We do that through a variety of different methods. And then moving so that going forward, you can operate in the safest possible landscape. And that, yes, that does mean getting into compliance in California or in potentially some other states that you have risk in. But from a compliance standpoint, if you're able to get into compliance and curtail your future liability, you also limit your exposure to other states potentially finding out about you and your activities. So by protecting yourself now, Prior to this problem going increasingly bigger and the state's getting more information about you and the state's getting more sophisticated in their enforcement efforts, you are at a golden opportunity because you could protect yourself right this second. And that's really, really important is it's not too late to do something about this problem. Uh, and there's no advantage of waiting for this problem to get worse because as you move further along in this process, and maybe you're no longer dealing with a compliance representative, you're dealing with an auditor, this problem gets progressively worse. So for those people who can be proactive and really get this out here ahead of time, there are ways to minimize your exposure and to limit the amount that you're gonna owe and to protect yourself. And one of the most important concepts I wanna impress upon you is it may not just be your business assets that are at risk. Depending on the situation, it may also be your personal assets that are at stake here. So there are things that you're going to want to do to protect your company as well as protect you as the principal shareholder um, and potentially any other exposure that you may have. And again, that's, this is all very fact specific, but I want to impress upon you that this might be a problem that goes just beyond your business because there is shareholder and responsible party liability in California um, as well as in another state, another, um, a number of other states. So. I want you to talk, talk to somebody. I want you to talk to either somebody who has experience in multi-state taxation. If you have a good multi-state CPA, the multi-state CPA is not the person who prepares your individual or corporate income tax returns. They are somebody who does this quite frequently. Um, or you're more than welcome to speak with me or another tax attorney about this problem. Um, because there's a few of us, and there's only a handful of us, who really understand this area of law because sales tax is so complicated and you are going to want to make sure that you get help or guidance you know what i tell prospective clients is i don't like to make decisions for people i like to give people enough information to facilitate their own decisions and so that's how we work as you know from a client relationship standpoint is we want to give people or at least the decision makers in whatever particular company whether it's you or you and a partner um, or you know, if there are multiple people or if you have officers or whatever, we want to give you as much information as possible so that you can uh, make the best decisions for your company.
because ultimately these, this isn't a legal decision, it really comes down to being a business decision. And you want to make the best business decisions as the owners and as the shareholders of your company to guide the company going forward and protect your business and protect your revenue stream and ultimately protect your family from the situation. So uh, if you have any further questions, please reach out to us. Our email address is lawoffice at sambrotman.com. You can also go to our website, www.sambrotman.com. Uh, there's a lot of information on there, um, as well as our phone number, which is 619-378-3138. Uh, and please feel free to book a consultation or ask us any questions. We'd be happy to dive into this further. So until next time, this is Sam Brotman here in San Diego signing off. And um, I hope you guys have a good day, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much.